Traditions are useful. They offer us a blueprint for how things can be done and a heritage which gains value over time. When you're an outsider though, you can kind of take what's practical from tradition and create something entirely new. This, my friends, is innovation. Which brings me to what's in my glass right here. Do you know what this wine is? Wine tells us a story. We just need to know how to read it. And this glass is saying a lot. The first thing we'll do is look at the color. And this is a deep purple ruby color. And when I say it's deep, it is near opaque. I can't see through it. Not only does this suggest that we have thicker skins with a lot of anthocyanins, but it also points to wine traits that cause co-pigmentation. Yep, it has tannin. A quick squirrel and I can see lots of tears staining on the side of the glass. The staining of the tears means the wine is unfiltered and the many of them suggest higher alcohol, AKA a higher, warmer climate. Ooh, I smell a swath of ripe fruit, ripe black currant, blackberry, black olive, and some subtleties of black pepper and violet. I don't get any sweet baking spices, which means no new oak. The combination of black currant and olives is interesting. It's not normal. It suggests a blend of grape varieties. Let's give it a whirl. Definitely full bodied with a creamy mid palate and moderately high tannins. The fruit is ripe, but not baked. It has a bit of tartness here. So we can assume that there's some kind of cooling influence, maybe elevation, maybe latitude, maybe a large body of water, something like that. What kind of red blend do you think this is? Is it Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon and Syrah, Syrah and Grenache, or Grenache and Pinot Noir? Let's phone a friend and ask Master of Wine, Christine Marsilio, to fill us in on what we have here. We've got lots to think about here. High levels of tannin, deep, almost inky color, and a mixture of tart, but ripe black fruit along with hints of herbal and pepper notes. We've got some hints here as to what is in this blend. Cabernet Sauvignon has an ethereal herbaceousness, especially when it's planted in more moderate climates. And we also have a distinct pepperiness, which indicates Syrah when it's grown in more moderate climates. Syrah and Cabernet Sauvignon are rarely blended together these days, but actually wineries in Bordeaux would regularly bring in Syrah from the Rhone to Bordeaux to beef up their Cabernet wines in the 19th century. One country where we do see Cabernet and Syrah blended is Australia. And one area where you can get a more moderate climate version of these two grapes in Australia is the Limestone Coast in South Australia. Hugging the cold Southern Ocean robe in the Limestone Coast sees cooling sea breezes that ensure a long growing season for both Cabernet and Syrah. That cool Southern Ocean also ensures a freshness of fruit and refreshing acidity that you might not associate with the Earth's driest inhabited continent. Let's take a look at this specific wine with Madeline to learn more about the producer and how best to enjoy this wine. This is a unique find indeed. We have a bottle of the 2021 Carrada the Great Cabsi. This wine has a couple of innovative things going on. First, it's a blend of 70% Cabernet Sauvignon and 30% Syrah. Traditionally, these grapes aren't allowed to be blended together. Second, the grapes were co-fermented, as in Syrah and Cab were fermented together. This is very, very rare. Winemakers don't usually co-ferment because it introduced potential risk to things going wrong during the fermentation. And yet, it worked out splendidly. For this particular wine, I want to pair it with a rich, fatty meat. I'm thinking bone-in ribeye. Or for you plant-based foodies, try out one of Wicked Kitchen's Lion Mane Mushroom Steak Recipes. Holy moly god, those steaks are so frickin' good. And the next time you feel like an outsider, just remember, you have innovation on your side. If you like this segment, we'd love to know about it. Leave me and Christine a comment. This wine is part of Wine Folly Club, where you learn by tasting. In the meantime, subscribe for more tasting videos like these. And until next time, happy tasting. Salute.